mentioned, we have someone being baptized here at the first service, and her name is Sandra Koch, and she's going to share a little of her story at this time. So I've been a Christian for a long time, but I've never been baptized by immersion, and a few months ago it felt like the, the Holy Spirit was nudging me to do this. So in preparing, I thought about what I've learned from God in the past few years. There was no one big event that I could point to as transformational, but there were a lot of small things that together had a big impact. And one of the biggest lessons I've learned is this. It is safe to trust God, the Father who loves us, and to trust what he has given us in his word, the Bible. Probably the most striking example of this in my life is shown in my history of what is normally referred to as mental illness. In my extended family, it's been rampant. We've had a death by suicide, shock therapy, hospitalizations for depression, for mania, which is part of bipolar disorder. And I have been a very anxious person, and I spent several years seeing psychiatrists. There were three in total other therapists, and taking medication. And I would just like to add as, as an aside that I, and very emphatically, that I benefited tremendously from both the therapy, the medical care, and the medication. I would never discourage anyone from taking advantage of either of those. There were many reasons for my anxiety and later for depression, but I want to focus on just one, which is that I looked at the Bible through the lens of what the world calls reality rather than the other way around. Given this history, a lifelong inclination to anxiety and depression and years of medication and therapy, I'm sure you'd agree it would be reasonable to see myself as having an unsound mind. And for a long time, I did see things this way. I used my personal experience as a starting point or frame of reference. However, in the Bible, I'm told in 2 Timothy 1.7 that in Christ, I have not been given a spirit of fear but of power, love, and of a sound mind. And in 1 Corinthians 2, 16, I'm told that as a Christian, I have the mind of Christ. This sure didn't feel like these things were true for me. What do we do when this happens? When our personal experiences contradict the word of God? Well, for most of my life, even as a Christian, I concluded that for certain things, the Bible must be mistaken, at least for me. Perhaps it worked for other people, or in other circumstances, but I concluded that the promise of a sound mind was not an objective reality upon which I could rely, so I discounted the promises. But over time, in a very gradual process, I began to stand on the promise of a sound mind as an objective truth, and eventually found it was true. Using the Bible promises as my starting point, not my personal experience, as a frame of reference, this allowed me to appropriate the promises. It wasn't instantaneous, it wasn't easy or painless. For instance, there were things of which I needed to repent and people I needed to forgive, and this was one thing that counseling uh, was invaluable for. I spent many hours with the Lord on my knees in tears, but the end result of taking God's promise at face value was the realization that the promises are true. And with this came resolution of the, both the anxiety and depression. This pattern of trusting God's word and later seeing it come true has repeated itself in my life and other uh, context, such as relationships and physical healing. To sum this up, I want to share a quote with you from Watchman Nee, who was a Chinese Christian who spent 20 years imprisoned and later died for his faith. Quote, All temptation is primarily to look within, to take our eyes off the Lord, and to take account of appearances. Faith is always a meeting of mountain, a mountain of evidence that seems to contradict God's word, a mountain of apparent contradiction in the realm of feeling and suggestion and neither faith or the mountain has to go. They cannot both stand, but the trouble is that many a time the mountain stays and faith goes. That must not be. If we resort to our senses to discover the truth, we shall find Satan's lies are often enough true to our experience. But if we refuse to accept as binding anything that contradicts God's word and maintain an attitude of faith in him alone, we shall find instead that Satan's lies begin to dissolve and that our experience is coming progressively to tally with that word, end quote. That has been my experience. And finally, from 1 Corinthians 1.9, God, who has called us into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, is faithful. Thank you. Heather Bowman, a friend of Sandra's, is going to pray for her. Sandra, I'm honored to be able to pray for you today on this occasion of your baptism. 
Uh, you and I and our children have been involved in Bible quizzing together for several years now, and we have learned so many things through the books of the Bible that we have studied. Um, let these verses from this year's quizzing material encourage you as you keep on fighting the battles the Lord has given you to fight. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5. For though we live in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not the weapons of the world. Instead, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We tear down arguments and every presumption set up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for Sandra, for the power of her testimony today. I thank you for her salvation, made possible through the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, that we celebrate this Easter morning. Thank you for making her your child and for working in her life to bring her to this point where she can claim your healing over her mind. And thank you for leading her to stand before us today to be baptized. Lord, would you continue to keep Sandra, to mold her into your image, to sustain her to the end so that she can be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Sandra, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sandra Koch, upon your profession of faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 